You're watching Telecom TV from SCWS World 2017 in London. And I'm joined now by Gordon Mansfield, who is Vice President RAN and Device Design at AT&T. Gordon, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Is the industry now rethinking how it approaches the network, how it plans and designs the radio access? Well, I think what's happening right now is, 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 is people look forward to 5G and, and the implications specifically of millimeter wave. You start to, to look at densifying the network more uh, versus some of the aspects that you may do in the macro. So, so you still have work going on in the macro to leverage your spectral assets in your wide area. Uh, LTE advanced capabilities are showing up uh, both in the handsets as well as the infrastructure. But then you start taking some of those LTE uh, advanced concepts and LTE advanced pro, and, and those capabilities are making them their way into small cells as you densify the network. Is the desire to maximize spectrum use accelerating the adoption of innovative technologies such as small cells? Well, you know, certainly, you know, spectral assets are, are very uh, a very key piece of a mobile operator, and so you want to you want to maximize the efficiency of, of all of your spectral assets. Um, as you start to densify the network, uh, you you basically are are putting more kit, more more gear on the ground uh, that reuses those spectral assets, and so you get maximum spectral efficiency that allows you to get higher peak speeds. Uh, out of out of those uh, out of those precious resources. So we don't have to wait until 5G in order to implement some of these technologies today. Yeah, that's right. So from a uh, unlicensed perspective, uh, you can start putting technologies like LAA, uh, which takes unlicensed spectrum, puts it together with your licensed aspects, and, and what that allows is higher peaking efficiency. Uh, which gives you higher speeds. So, from a customer expect, uh, a, a customer experience perspective, it gives them a better, uh, better quality experience by combining both licensed and unlicensed uh, uh, spectral assets. You mentioned millimeter wave spectrum. Is this going to put added pressure onto the radio access network? What with different propagation characteristics, for example. Millimeter wave is, is definitely um, a, a different has different propagation characteristics than our sub six frequencies that we use today. Um, but what you end up doing is you introduce massive MIMO type of, of, of capabilities and smart beam steering, which will allow you to get greater range out of, out of that millimeter wave spectrum. And so your, your small cell layer, your densification layer that you build today, uh, is being built in such a way that you can add millimeter wave spectrums with all of those advanced capabilities and it'll get similar range. So where are we with RAN Evolution and where do you see it going? So if, if you look at LTE and the LTE evolution to, to 5G, um, we actually have LTE Advanced capabilities that are being deployed today. Uh, you have LTE Advanced Pro capabilities uh, that are also starting to see uh, their way into uh, feature in, into uh, uh, roadmaps, infrastructure roadmaps today. Uh, and 5G millimeter wave is, is actually not as far away as you believe uh, or, or as you may think. The, uh, the, the standards have been accelerated uh, and we're actually saying that we might see 5G new radio capabilities as soon as the end of 2018. Uh, and so capabilities, uh, when you think about 5G, if you think about the new radio together with advances that are happening in LTE, they're going to come together to provide 5G. Are these developments making service providers cloud native yet? Yeah, it's, it's an evolution for sure. Um, AT&T has been one of the leaders in that space. Uh, we've already got 35, uh, 34% uh, at the end of uh, last year uh, that is already uh, uh, network function virtualization or SDN capable. Uh, we're expecting to have 55% of our network functions virtualized by the end of this year, uh, upwards of 75% by 2020. And so, you know, from a mobile network perspective, by virtualizing these capabilities, it will allow us to move faster, implementing new 5G type of capabilities uh, by, by creating uh, slices of, of network functions for, for different service offerings. So as we deploy small cells, are we now considering more specific use cases, which in turn is pushing service providers to becoming digital service providers? Well, if, if you think about 5G, it's not just about speed, it's also about reduced latency. And so as you start increasing your speeds uh, and lowering the latencies, it starts to enable all kinds of capabilities like virtual reality or augmented reality. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, 
you know, we, we, we like to think of it as the connected society. Uh, and, and so what these capabilities will enable are service offerings that people haven't even thought about, um, but it will be a differentiator. It will, be, uh, it will change the lives uh, of, of enterprises and consumers alike. This year marks the 10th anniversary of the Small Cells Forum. Now, as a past chairman of the forum, are you pleased with the way we've progressed in these 10 years? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. If you look in the past 10 years, the Small Cell Forum started 10 years ago with, with seven really small vendors coming together to drive what was then known or became known as the Femto standard. Uh, Femto cells uh, you know, have, have really uh, you know, been, been something that AT&T drove uh, and we've deployed you know, uh, a significant number within our network. But we've evolved that technology into small cells and what exists today. Uh, and they really become the cornerstone of, of, of what we're driving for 5G uh, and the capabilities that we'll deliver for tomorrow as well. Gordon, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.